Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafts by the Bow. Today I've started to make my Easter cards and I'm really loving this little stamp set with the daffodils on from the Your Inspiring set. And so I've decided that this year my cards are going to have these daffodils on. I've already made two cards and I used the larger daffodils and the acetate card that I made with the cupcake set a couple of weeks ago. So it's just the daffodils. This is um, some retired DSP, I'm afraid. But uh, so there's the acetate cards that I've made and I decorated the envelope flaps. And so for this card, I'm using the smaller daffodils and I'm going to make a Dutch fold card or a Dutch door fold card. So let's show you how we start. Now usually when you make these cards, you start with one piece of paper and you score it on the long side, you turn it round, score it on the short side, and then as you're scoring, you score so far down, skip a piece, score a piece, and oh, it's just too much effort for me. So I found an easier way to cut the card and to do exactly the same job, just using less card. So that's what I'm going to show you. So we need a stamping trimmer. I have got the sizes here and I'll leave that on my pad so that you can see it all of the time. So we start off with a normal size piece of card and we need the eight and a half inch side and we know this is eight and a half. That's the side that we're going to put sort of um, at a right angle. So we put it this way round and we're going to cut at four and a quarter. So here it is at four and a quarter. And we're going to cut another piece while we've still got this piece in our hand at two and a half. And this is the piece you have left, which is quite a useful size for card matting or cutting out pieces. So that's a good size to keep. Okay, now on the first piece, which was four and a quarter by eight and a half, we're going to score it at five and a half. And on the second piece, which was two and a half by eight and a half, we're going to score it at two and one eighth. Now, you can score it at both sides at two and one eighth because these are going to co uh, create our little flaps. But sometimes I find that if I do score it like that, by the time I turn the flaps over, I have a tiny little gap down the front and I don't want to see the paper that's underneath. So for this one, I'm only going to score it at one side. But on the instructions, I have put score at both sides. Okay, so I'm going to fold this piece in and make sure that it's all lined up, top and bottom. And with my bone folder, I'm just going to fold that down and burnish it. Now, to make it so that I know these two pieces match up exactly, I'm just going to fold it gently, push the two sides together, and then use my bone folder. And that way, I know that there's not a gap in the middle here. And with this piece, I'm going to fold it as well. And this is the basis of our card. Instead of having the big pieces that you've cut the squares out so that the flaps fold over, you've now got the flaps separate, but we're going to glue them onto here. And you still get the nice flat back. There's no pieces overlapping or anything. But honestly, I think this is such a much easier way to make it. Now, I've cut that in the crushed curry, but I've already prepared one in granny apple green. So I'm just going to pop these to one side. And here are the pieces in the granny apple green. You see, I'm just at the same stage where I've folded the top down. I've got the two pieces, the two flaps ready, and we're going to attach those to the bottom of the card. I'm just going to get my fast fuse and I'm just going to put fast fuse on the back. Okay. Now, to 
make sure that this lines up, what I'm going to do is try and put this edge up to the very bottom. If you use like the Tombow adhesive, you have got a little bit more wiggle room on this. So it's probably an easier one to use, but it's not too difficult to line up, to be honest. Okay, so there we are with our flap already. And as I said, you've got a nice smooth back and we're going to cut a piece of white card at four by five and a quarter and that's just going to fit on the inside so people won't even see that this is an extra piece joined on. I'll pop that in right now while it's there. I've looked at lots and lots of the um, Dutch door fold cards on Pinterest and you know on the demonstrator's website and Although the cards are beautiful when you use the other method of scoring and skipping and cutting, I can't really see much of a difference. And I would rather go for this easy one. There we go. Okay. Now, next, we need a second colour. And this is the Granny Apple Green. And I've chosen the Crushed Curry, which is what I was cutting the other one out in because by now you might have realised I'm actually going to make two cards and I'm just going to reverse the colours. So here's our piece for the top flap which is cut at four by two and three quarters. It's going to go on here and we've got a piece of DSP and that's cut at one and oh no three and three quarters by two and a half. I beg your pardon. And it's just going to stick onto here so I'm going to glue that first. And this paper is from the little 6x6 DSP, the designer series paper, just in brights. And um, you get Bermuda Bay, Coastal Cabana, Daffodil Delight, Flirty Flamingo, Gorgeous Grape, Granny Apple Green, which is the one I'm using, Mango Melody, Melon Mambo, Pacific Point, Poppy Parade and Whisper White. Whisper White is actually the backs of each of them. So it's a, a nice little selection. Okay, so I'll just pop this on. And then we're going to attach it onto here. Once you get your pieces cut for this card, it's really quick to come together. But people don't know that when they're opening it or, or looking at it. They just see it as a wow card. And it is a wow card, but it's not too difficult a wow card. Okay, so that's our top flap done. We're going to do exactly the same, but with our bottom flaps. Okay. So now I have the, the crushed curry cut, and this is cut at one and seven eighths by two and a quarter, and you need two of those. And then the DSP is cut at one and five eighths by two, and you need two of those. Now let's just attach these pieces. That doesn't look the same size as that one. Where's the piece I need? I think I've just popped it back in the bag. Yeah, there it is. Is that it? No. Where's the other little piece? Oh well. Let's cut this down again. Not sure if it's in the bag or not now. I can't see it. So I think we have it the right length. It's just the width that needs changing. Maybe I didn't finish cutting it. So this is, let's see, which was the right side, this one. So this was the two inch, so now we need it cut at one and five eighths. So here's one, one and four eighths, one and five eighths. I probably just forgot to cut the last little piece off. But not a problem. Check that that fits. Yep. I can't believe we're thinking about Easter already. Oh. The year's going really quickly now. 
And now that spring's on its way, everywhere's starting to look just a little tiny bit greener, or maybe just less white. Pop these onto the little flaps. I'm just going to make sure that on this one, do you see I've got the thin piece at the top and the thicker stripe at the bottom. I'm just gonna make sure I get them both the same way around. I'm going to turn it like that so I can see just the just the flap and not the rest of the green. me while I just pick up one of my little Larry Nobles that I dropped. Okay, so here we are. That's the basic card all made. If you, <coughs> excuse me, if you wanted to do any writing inside or stamping, you could always stamp the bigger daffodils in here or the smaller ones again and still have lots of room for your greeting. Okay, so now I'm going to choose what we're putting on here for the decoration. And I've cut out already and coloured in the small daffodils and this one, I did write it down, I cut it at three inches by two inches and I cut the back in in the crushed curry at three and a quarter by two and a quarter, like this. And that's just to go on here. But I also did it and cut it out with Valerian ovals. So I chose the largest of the scalloped and the next one down of the ovals. Because I thought that might look quite nice too. go like this and the joy with these cards is you can have it so that this is just on the top and the card opens this way or you can turn them so that you have them this way and then when it's standing up this flap goes to the bottom and it it will stand that way so you can choose which way around you want it to go. It's, it's pretty sweet that way, but I'm gonna go with this way. And I'm going to use this one first. So I colored the daffodils in with the Daffodil Delight, the Dark Daffodil Delight and the Light. And I used a little bit of the, um, oh, the Mango Melody for the darker pieces on the daffodils and then just a little bit of pumpkin pie for the orange where you could see the little stamens. Okay, so let's see. We're only going to adhere the top half of this. So you could put it on dimensionals if you wanted to so that it just stuck out a little bit more. But I'm going to put it down with fast fuse because I have another little piece that I want to go on there and uh, I want that piece to go on dimensionals. I'm just going to get my card straight and then just pop it just where I want it to go. I don't want it to be too low. Okay. Yeah, that's about right. And then what I've done as well is I've just stamped the Happy Easter in the black memento. And I'm using this label punch just to cut them out. Now they're not stamped particularly straight on this paper, on this card, but it doesn't matter because I can make it straight with, with my punch. Okay, and then I'm going to put that just across the bottom here and I'm going to put it on dimensionals and I'm just going to put two little pearls one at either side there. And I think I might use the artisan pearls. I'm just going to find the dimensionals first. Just open a new pack. I 
around these. I always think that these larger ones are a bit too big for this, so I'm going to use the edging. I really prefer to use the smaller dimensionals um, when I've used this punch. I don't like any of the dimensionals to show. Okay. You could put your sentiment up at the top or um, you could also put more stamping pictures in here if you wanted. But I just want mine to go over the bottom of the stems. Let's find some diamond, uh, some little pearls. Just get my box out. Let's see which colour we're going to use. I think I'm probably going to use the yellow because the others are not quite the right green. I don't really want to use the orange. Um, what else I've got. I don't want to use the pink because that doesn't work either. I could use my um, stamping right markers or my ink and colour over some pearls so that they're just the right colour. That might be an idea because I could use then granny apple green. Let's have a little the bit bigger pearls. I don't think I want to use those bigger ones. What about these little gold ones? Oh, that looks quite nice. Let's use the little metallic ones from the occasions catalogue. I'm just going to pop one at each side. There we are. So now you can see exactly how the card is going to stand. I know it's difficult looking from the bird's eye view, but it does stand really nicely. I can sort of recreate it for you. You can have these flaps so that they stand out and then they, it just catches the top of the card. It's difficult to do that way, but the top of the card just catches and sits on these like on the two little doors. Now the very last thing that I'm going to do, I've just moved that, is I'm going to decorate my envelope. And as you know, just lately, I've en really enjoyed decorating the envelopes and making everything match. So I'm going to put some fast views down here, around the bottom of my envelope. Put this up to the very edge. Just makes it so that it sort of looks like a matching set then. And then trimming round. Now don't forget we've only got a couple more days left of celebration. So if you want anything so that you can get the free items, you've only got a couple of days left. If you, want, if you don't have a demonstrator and you'd like to order something, just send me an email and I'll be thrilled to be your demonstrator. And uh, if you wanted to join Stampin' Up, there's absolutely no obligation to buy anything other than the starter kit. And once you've got the starter kit, you never have to order another thing. But don't forget, you do get 20% off at least of all of your orders. So if you're interested in getting the starter kit, which is really good value at the moment, it works out to about 48% off normal prices just for your kit. And you can choose whatever you want to go in your kit. So if you're at all interested in that, just drop me a line. And uh, if you need to order anything but don't want to join and don't want to have the starter kit, then equally you can order through me. But thank you very much indeed for watching me. I hope you have a go at this little Dutch barn fold card or the Dutch door fold as some people call it. And I hope you'll agree too that this is a much more economical way to make it. 
it's an easy way and you don't use so much card. So thanks very much indeed for watching everybody. I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.